used to work night work, and my job took me all over from Society Hill to the Badlands to Mantua, and this particular ver very, very cold evening, I had to go to an area in West Philly, about 51st and Arch, and uh, I pulled up, and uh, there were a couple fellows doing business there, and I, I didn't want to in interfere with their business. That could have been dangerous, so I just pulled over, and I said, fellas, I just have to take care of this customer and give her some heat. Do you mind, guys? And he just said, I parted, and I went in, and, you know, I wanted to just say, I just hope they save some of the money besides for cards, cards, jewelry, and give some money to mom, grandma, and the kids, and various girlfriends. Take care of the family. But anyway, I go into this customer's house, and it's a beautiful, like a Victorian type of house. And this this one customer, she had the she sewed and she put these little doilies on dolls, and it was so cute. And she said, "My name's Miss McLean. Would you like some tea?" And I said, "I would love some tea, Miss McLean." So I go in and, and I sit down, and she says to me, she said, well, "It wasn't always like this around here." And I said, "I know, man." She said, "I grew up in this neighborhood, and many, many years ago," she said. My father is of Irish descent, and my mother's African American. And her father had come from, uh, you know, his ancestors came from Ireland to escape the potato famine, and uh, you know, which some people call genocide. And her family came up from the south to escape uh, racial intolerance and uh, to come up and and be able to live and, and make some more money than what they were making previously. So she proceeded to tell me, you know, the story about the fact that the east side of 52nd Street was mo mostly Italian and the west side of 52nd Street was Irish. And when she was just a little girl, her father was a teacher, and, her, and there was a fight between the Italian and the Irish guy, and, and they were calling each other certain ethnic epitaphs, and she had laughed, and her father took her off to the side and said, don't ever laugh at that, it's not funny. And uh, she didn't. And she was told me a story about when she was older, and she went to visit her brother. He was in World War II fighting for America, and she went down the south, and and she was a very light-skinned black lady. And uh, she went, and she uh, she went outside the railroad, and a, a cab immediately pulled up and said, "Would you like uh, Would you like me to take you where you have to go?" And so she goes in, and the guy says, "Where are you from?" And she says, "Philadelphia." And he says, "Well." I hear they got a lot of, and use the N word, moving in up there. And she just realized then that the cab driver thought she was white. And anyway, she, what she half was. But anyway, she, this lady is a teacher. She was a teacher. She's very old. I don't know if she's still living, but we proceeded to just talk, and she told me about her family. And uh, I guess the story is about. It's about uh, danger, but it's also about nobility. It's about ignorance, which really is the greatest danger in this country today. And, you know, I, I just like to uh, say a, a poem by a, a famous American poet. And, and the poem goes a little like this. Anyway, Miss McLean, wherever you are, honey. Well, you can't judge an apple by looking at the tree. I said you can't judge, honey, and looking at the bee. I said you can't judge a sister by looking at the brother. Man, you can't judge a book by looking at the cover. I said, can't you see? Oh, Lord, what you doing to me? I, well, I might look like a farmer. This was a lover, man, you can't judge a book by looking at the cover. Just remember, racial intolerance of all sorts is ignorance. Ignorance is the main enemy. Keep it out of this, man. Thanks, Miss McLean. Thanks, Bo Diddley, and thanks, Mom and Sweet Lorraine. All right.